Hello ladies and gentlemen, Frosty here, and as indicated by the time, it is time for one of my real chats. And this real chat has been brought to my attention by a little girl named Coolie Girl on Twitter. I will be plugging your Twitter handle down there in the video description below, so all of you guys can feel free to give her that internet depth she so greatly reserves. Well, deserves, not reserves. And, uh, you know, tweeter, retweeter, thumbs up, things of that nature. Good on you, kid. But moving forward, we're here to talk about feminism and how it affects the video game phenomena and how Mrs. Anita Sarkeesian has been exposed, destroyed, and blown up about her attempts to try to expose aforementioned video game and feminism relationship phenomena. So, Anita Sarkeesian, before we even move forward, you have to pick a side. Are you a gamer who's trying to poke at the faults of video games in their male and female gender relationship? Or are you not a gamer and you're someone on the outside looking in, trying to peek through the blinds and should be minding your own business before just jumping into things? You got to pick a side and you got to be honest with yourself and the people supporting you and your detractors on what you really are so we can make an informed decision of how serious you need to be taken or how you need to be dealt with and what course of action should be taken with people like you. And also, another thing I want to say, Mrs. Anita, is you got to read in between the lines in a lot of the issues that you bring up and a lot of the examples you bring up to support aforementioned gripes you have with certain video games. But we're going to put that on the side for now because I want to talk about a couple of things and one of them is known as the point-to-point -point relationship. Now, what is a point-to-point -point relationship, you may ask? Is it a term you just made up? Yeah, it really is. But you see this point? Because I make a point, you see where you are? This point is not in the same location. This point is to my right. To you, it's to your left of this video. It is farther from you than it is from me. I can reach out and touch it. If you were right there, you'd have to have some pretty stretchy arms to reach out and touch this point. If I put this point over here, you cannot see this point. However, with the turn of my head and my perspective, I can see this point. But you see why you can't see this point? It's because there's a way that you cannot relate to what I am saying. I can relate to what I'm saying because I am here and you are there. Much like how, from a different viewpoint, you cannot relate to someone's gripe or complaint about certain issues because you are not in their shoes. So, let me give you an example of that. Remember Metroid Other M, a game that came out a few years ago on the original Nintendo Wii? And a lot of people were saying that it was misogynistic and that it ruined Samus's character. It made her go from the tough, badass, silent, space alien beater to, Oh my god, the walls are closing in on me! Oh my god, it's Ridley! Oh my god, not again! I've only faced him a few times! Oh my god, I'm in a fetal position, sucking my thumb, fighting my nails! Oh my god, I'm a preteen little emo girl! No! And you know, on many occasions you could say that, and you'd be right. Cool. But in and of the same breath, I can say that Metroid Other M also had some racial overtones. Because, as we all know, with the current era of rap music, black men aren't really too fond of women in these songs. You know, I'm not even going to regurgitate the lyrics, especially how asinine they are. But as we've seen in Metroid Other M, Anthony Higgs gives that sarcastic smile, calls her princess, and, you know, treats Samus like she's a little girl, even though she's proven time and time again that she can hold her own, and in some cases, simply outdoing the whole team of men that Anthony is a part of. Still calling her princess, still treating her like she's five, and not acknowledging, really, that she's grown up, and Samus just kind of taking it as, that's Anthony! And I can sit there and say that of the same, the same breath and the information I presented, yes, it matches what I'm trying to tell you. But does that mean that's what the people were make, were trying to pretty much broadcast to the world? Was that a stereotype they, they were really trying to perpetuate to the masses? No, that's not really what their goal was. Also, as I said, point to point basis. I can say I see that because I'm a black person and, you know, I'm a black male, so I can relate to anything. But if you're a white female, you probably don't even notice how Anthony is as a character. You may just think he's a guy just calling her princess. 
as a white male. You may not even see either of these two characters as being ruined or ridiculed or put on a different spectrum or a different plateau on how their characterization has come through the storyline of the game. You may not see it that way. You just may not. Because it's all about relative perspective. So let me give you another example. Remember Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3? We've been killing white people for decades. We've been just bodying white people. Hey, white zombie, pow, 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 pow. Hey, white zombie, bang, bang. Hey, white zombie, here's the chainsaw. You're dead, bang, bang. Rocket launches in the face. <laughs> then we, you know, we went over there and started beating up the Spaniards. Ha, huh, Spanish zombie. What'd you say? You also went to Marte? No. How about I am El Fuerte? And just pulling out the flamethrower and burning them all to a crisp. No problems there. However, once this virus somehow sparks its way into Resident Evil 5, and all of a sudden the zombies are black, that's right, black people can get affected too. Oh my god, it's racist. And now we have to call the NAACP, Barack Obama, Oprah Winfrey, Al Sharpton, Martin Luther King, dig him up out of the grave, put him out here, give him a making sure he gives the I Have a Dream speech part two, talking about I have a dream where Resident Evil will no longer have black zombies. Like, you, you see how ridiculous it was and how people were calling racism, etc., etc., etc. To even me, it wasn't racist. It wasn't a big deal. But to some other people from the outside looking in, they don't understand the video game culture. They just saw a white guy shooting black people, and that's as far as they wanted to think it through. They look at it from the most shallowest point and don't even bother to dig deeper. Another example of this is Bioshock Infinite. You do know that there were white people saying that Bioshock Infinite was a white person killing simulator. It's just, hey, I hate white people. I get Bioshock Infinite. I kill a whole bunch of white people. So I guess every other video game military shooter is a white person simulation killer? Is that, that what you're trying to communicate to me? I don't really understand the logic behind this now. You're really going to call it a white person killing simulator? Okay. So as we all know, different perspectives, different viewpoints. But are you able to tie it together to where your points are valid? Because a lot of the games that Anita talks about, if you actually look deeper, they're not that sexist. Many of the games that feminists talk about being misogynistic and pessimistic towards women, they're not. For example, let's look at the Mario franchise. They always say Peach is always playing the damsel in distress. She's helpless. She can't defend herself. She's this and she's that. But let's actually look at Mario games. How many times do you see Mario games where Peach is crying and sad and scared and alone and battered and bruised? Uh oh, you don't recall that? Because most of the times that I can recall when Mario finds Peach and Bowser for the final showdown, Peach is just kind of chilling there waiting for the fight to end. Like, let's look at Mario Sunshine. You remember that fight? She was chilling in a hot tub with an umbrella even, on a sitting on a rubber ducky. It doesn't get much more comfortable than that. And she's like, Mario, I'm here. Yeah. Still here. And then, you know, Bowser and Mario compete. And speaking of them competing, let's look a little bit deeper here. Let's not try to lose anybody on this one, though. Bowser and Mario are competing. Are they doing it to filter their manly egos to see who's the better man? No. They are fighting for their goal, their gold medal, their pinnacle, their creme de la creme, their beauty. Their great one, Princess Peach, she's the prize. She's the most coveted thing in all of existence. The woman is literally the queen. She is literally like a god. They worship this woman. She is the top. She is the bee's knees. It's just tops. That is what Princess Peach represents. That is why Bowser and Mario are willing to go through such lengths just to have her. But nobody looks at it like that. Another thing is, a lot of people say, Well, Zelda's also a damsel in distress, always needing Mrs. L Mr. Link to save the day. Well, I could give you that, but at the in and of the same breath, 
Yeah, uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, do you remember this character named Sheik? Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but newsflash, that, uh, yeah, that's Zelda. She can protect her identity and kick a little ass on the side. Yeah, she's actually capable. She's not inept. So, as I said, depending on where you are and what viewpoint you have, you will definitely see things differently. You can always make a case for and against something. For example, let's go outside of the video game media for a second, and let's look at commercials. Do any of you remember a KFC commercial where there was this white grandpa and this white, I want to say it was his grandson, but the white grandson was like, man, we want to go to KFC, but we can only get one side. Hmm. I want macaroni and cheese. And the grandpa was like, I want mashed potatoes. And then they start having like a wrestling match and they're beating each other up. And then the parents come in. We can get both. And then, you know, they're all happy and whatnot because they got their delicious KFC meal. Now, we all know if that would have been a black family fighting and getting physically involved over a chicken dinner. NAACP, people would have been calling it racist. People would have been like, oh, my God, did you see that? Can you possibly believe it? Oh, my God, that's insane, right? And, you know, honestly, it wasn't, it wouldn't be racist. It's just they wanted macaroni and cheese and one wanted mashed potatoes. It's not racist. And also, I can also say that, oh my god, they're totally saying that all old people, all they can really eat is freaking mashed potatoes. I can eat a steak and I'm 82. Like, you, you can jump to these outrageous conclusions if you want. They're not necessary, nor are they needed, but it's the simple fact that you can do them that's disgusting, that diminishes so many possible positive outlets for all these entertaining me entertainment mediums. It's kind of sad. Another fine example of this is if I'm a black guy and I eat a watermelon, all of a sudden there's so many stigmas and stereotypes and funny jokes and witty humor that people will like to throw and try to coerce the comment section with. But if I was a white guy and I eat a watermelon, you get, hey, that's, how's that watermelon? Tastes good? Must be a nice watermelon. Thumbs up for the watermelon. And we've seen how the mind works. Many people, for one scenario, will go completely ballistic and be, oh my god, what are you doing? Oh my god, that's insane. Oh my god, you're such an insensitive ass. But in and of the same breath, in a slightly altered situation where it's nothing more than a pigment difference, yay, good for you, kid. And that's about as far as people think it through. And, you know, as we've all said before, this has always been said in other outlets, sexism is a two-way street. It's how you analyze it and break it down that makes it different. Now, as we all know, when you see games like Lollipop Chainsaw, many people may sit here and say, Well, that's just rude. That's not how women should be. Women should not be tolerated wearing skirts and being all skimpy like that. Well, to be fairly honest, in high school ages, a lot of girls are like that. They are. And a lot of people may take that little high, that uh, Lollipop Chainsaw a little bit farther and say something along the lines of, well, even if they are like that, they shouldn't be weren't parading around in little skimpy skirts and outfits. Even though she's being one of the biggest ass kickers of the current generation of video games. I mean, let's face it, she kicked a lot of ass in that game. She was definitely handling her own. Sure, she may have used a head, but guess what? Her boyfriend is a head, meaning at some point he lost the fight. She still has a body, meaning at some point, she's still fully able to beat anything up as she pleases. So, as we know, she's the superior one in this very specific case. Now, if we want to move a little bit on from that, I could say that men should feel victimized in and of the same breath of all these games where you see, Yeah, that's what I'm slinging the big one. Yeah, I'm getting all finessed. Yeah, you know what time it is? It's man time. Doing girls for the girls. Yeah, it's time for the thrusting. Yeah, that's what it's time for. Yeah, I'm roiding up. I'm getting stronger. Look at these pythons. I mean, I could do that. I could sit here and say that men are nothing more than big behemoth and hairy apes and baboons throwing around in pissing contests in every single video game known to man that's rated M for mature. I can say that 
oh, men have no regard for human life, we're nothing but insecure, sarcastic assholes as perpetuated in pretty much any anime game you've ever seen with a character like Sasuke, Vegeta, or any of these characters like Hiei who are always like, yeah, I'm a man, and I'm emo, and I'm dark, and I'm edgy, and I don't care about anyone. I don't even care about myself. That's how dark I am. Edgy. I mean, I can sit there and say that. I can say that men don't care about, you know, the people around them, and they just want to show off and be their sarcastic selves and just be douchebags to everyone. I can sit here and say that we're nothing more than pretty much, hey, I like to kill things because I'm a guy. Kill, 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 kill. I could say that. Does that make it true? No, but I can find a plethora of examples to back up those statements. Now, couldn't I? Now, a lot of people may say, hey, but it's different for men, because men are always in a positive scope. No, no, they're not. As we've seen in video games, we kill men, we beat men, men have men are freaks, a lot of men are shut-ins in video games, in character, never seen a woman in their life, many of them are lonely, shy, go through character development, some even just get killed for being rude, Bad people die, they get ripped apart, they get the most heinous of deaths, they get bodied, wrecked, destroyed, lit on fire, tortured, and, you know, they get victimized just as often, if not more so, than women do the fact that there's more men in the video games. And you're probably wondering, well, why is that? Why is it that men are always so superior in some cases? Well, a lot of the cases that you bring up, you have to actually think about. When you talk about women getting sexualized and victimized in the, all these ways, you do realize you're talking about a very, 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 very small pool of games. Sure, they may be popular games, but you do realize that the video game series that you're pulling from don't even make 5% of the video game series total. You do understand that, right? There's a very, 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 very finite number of games in this infinite spectrum of games across the board that will ever have this misogynistic overtone that you somehow just throw out there. And a lot of those games in that finite spectrum aren't even as sexist as you may try to mislead people into thinking they are. But back to the main topic, I, I kind of digressed off that a little bit though, is a simple fact that as we all know, men can be looked at in one light and women can be looked in at one light. But from different sides, we see two completely different things. From a man's side, I say, man, that woman is beautiful, man. I just want to protect her. I want to make sure nothing happens to her. But then from this angle, I can be like, that man doesn't care about me. I'm just surprised that he thinks he could just win. You know, it's things like that. It's little things like that, little nuances like that, that make this such a hard thing to really debate and talk about. Another thing that a lot of people seem to overlook is the culture bounds. What do I mean by culture bounce? As we all know, Nintendo and Sony, they make games. Yes, they do. They actually have first-party titles. And as we all know, they're on the Eastern Hemisphere, where, let's be honest, we have Muslims over there who pretty much can have about 50 wives, and all of them just feel as though they need to be domesticated and do whatever the husband says. We have people in Japan, and let's just be honest, in Japan and China, the men and female ratio in terms of respect points really ain't the same. We all know that men are put on a pedestal here and women are somewhere down here. And let's be honest, it wasn't too long ago where if you had a female baby in China, you had to kill it. So let's not even try to downplay that fact. But moving forward, in terms of culture, it's just been the culture in some of these areas that develop games with video game developing studios. It's never been to hate women. It's just what they've known since day one. That's just how they've been. They've been on this quote-unquote man-dominated world type thing for years. That's just how they have been and that's how they perceive life. Now, you don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to like it. But you have to understand, culture is not something that you could just say is wrong or right. I can be a Christian. I'm not. But I can be a Christian. I can see someone just practicing Islam religion, and I can say, you're wrong, but does that make me right for doing it? No. In and of the same breath where you cannot tell somebody that their culture is wrong because culture is something that is learned. You can, yeah, you can unteach it, but let's be honest, that's a pretty hard thing to do, and as you know, anyone who's proud of their culture will have their culture ooze and translate to their work. 
So with that said, you have to also keep that in mind. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is, oh, wait, that's right. Video games and their storylines. You do realize on a lot of these storylines where you say these women are being victimized, beaten, battered, and bruised, you do know that you have to come up, it's right. Nine times out of ten, when that character is an asshole to a woman and a woman is victimized, you destroy the woman. You destroy that guy who ever did that to that woman, right? Whoever accosted and assaulted this woman, you annihilate them. You do understand that's pretty much what happens in just about every instance of this, right? Okay, then. And I think I've rambled on quite a bit about this subject that I didn't really want to touch, but... um. I think right now I'd pretty much just be going in circles. If I continued any further, I don't really think there's anything else that I need to add on to the spectrum here. So you guys let me know what you think in the video description below, or not the video description, the comment section below, or on Twitter, or on Skype. I really don't want to talk about this anymore, but you know, it'd be interesting to see what you guys had to say about it. Maybe you guys want to blow me up and say I'm wrong and I'm a misogynistic pig for thinking this way. Or maybe you have a way to enlighten me on something that I've overlooked. However, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm the Black Creon, aka Frosty, and uh, I'm going to um, bite my nails because I'm a little sissy. Do you believe me yet? You're still here. <laughs>